So this is what we are going to be doing in this tutorial. This is the result and just to give you guys a glimpse of what's going on on the Photoshop file, we're going to be going over the layers of the project. The first one is a shadow pass and we want this separate to be able to control the opacity and the color later on. Then we have the tail itself and we want this isolated, meaning no pixels on the background, just the tail. And this will help us merge it with the original image a lot better. Then I'm going to fix the transition between the original shadow of the photo and the render pass of the shadow. And then I added a fishnet to sort of tell a story that she's escaping from someone and then some contrast with dash and burn. So my original image is a bit of a mess. I had a lot of footsteps when I took the photo, so I'm just going to erase one just to show you that you have to prepare the image. I didn't really prepare for this image, it just kind of occurred to us when we were at the beach. And you can sort of tell because her hair is uh, dry and the dress that she has on her is also dry it doesn't it doesn't make perfect sense so i'm gonna add a new layer to sort of start the process of painting what i want the tail to look like in this case i really love the look of sirens that have long tails so that's what i'm going for i'm going to adjust a little bit the drawing that i did and then I'm going to paint over a little bit just to get a, a better idea of what I want to do later on the 3D software. If I were to do this on Blender, it will take me a lot of time just to move around the model on the, the vertices or the sculpture that I will have to create. And um, I think I'm happy with that result. To keep this tutorial short, I'm actually going to be using a 3D model that I did of my girlfriend a couple of months ago and I am also using a tail of a previous project of a siren that I did as well. Instead of uh, wasting everybody's time of you looking at me modeling this stuff. I'm just going to adjust the tail a little bit like you see me doing here. It's not attached to the model, but that's okay. I'm going to mix both of the material with a mask instead. I didn't want to really waste a lot of time modeling here. And this is what the mask looks like that mixes both of the material well. And there you can see that the tail is merging together. Not perfectly, but well enough. Now the next step is crucial. We're going to set up a camera with the background image of the image that we took and we are going to match the resolution of the photo into the 3D camera. And then we are going to model the sand and I'm starting out with a plane that I'm going to subdivide just to get a little bit of more control. And the reason this is important is because we want the light bounces to be as accurate as the situation of when the original photo was taken if that makes sense. So when the light bounces off the plane that I'm creating right here, it will create shadows and reflect light in the most accurate way so that it looks more realistic. And in the end, the blending of the 3D model and the photo will be easier to achieve. Now I go into edit mode, hit U on the keyboard and select project from view. This is going to unwrap the photo onto the plane so that the material itself has the color of the sand and the reflections of the sand into the tail will be more precise. I hit ctrl T on the material to prompt a texture with UV maps. If you have the node wrangler I recommend you activate it and then I select the background image which is the photo. So the plane now has the colors of the photo. 
I will also subdivide the plane just to give it a little bit more of resolution because I'm going to need that for the next step. This is where things took a turn because I actually made a mistake by using the model of my girlfriend and the existing tail that I wanted to recycle. Here you can see I'm struggling with the rig that resulted from the mix and in hindsight I don't think it's necessary to go through all of this. You are better off just sculpting off the tail from scratch. I also wanted the shadows of the sand to sort of break unevenly. So I first tried with a normal map generated from the image inside of Photoshop. That failed. So then I tried to use a displacement map instead. However, the map generated was too noisy and the displacement modifier just went everywhere. My third attempt was just to sculpt out the surface of the sand and just pray to the gods it matched. And it did, it looked a lot better. And since I sculpted the tail with dynamic topology to fix it, now I had to UV unwrap it again. Then I baked from my master procedural shader. And by the way, the add-on that I'm using for baking is called Simple Bake. And it is totally worth the money. Baking in Blender is very confusing and this add-on makes it a lot easier. And lastly, I wasn't too happy with the coral fin and I also wanted to add um, pelvic fins. But they kind of looked too chunky when I sculpted them. I was really going for a more organic look and for them to look weak and fragile because they are outside of the water. So instead of sculpting them, I used Marvelous Designer to simulate them. And they ended up pretty good. I just needed to paint and mix them with the original tail. I also simulated the fishing net, but this was simple enough to do it inside of Blender. And again, I really wish the hair and the dress were wet just to give it a little bit more of realism to the story. I think every detail matters. So now that the tail is finally done, I'm gonna do the passes. The first one is the tail alone with a transparent background. And to do that, I'm just going to select the backgrounds that I need to hide and go to properties and select holdout. Render that out, save it as a PNG with an alpha channel. And for the second pass, I'm going to revert the changes of the holdout and instead select them as shadow catchers. I will also select the tail and fins and I'm going to deselect camera from the visibility options. Render it out, save it, and now in Photoshop, I'm going to import those layers on top of each other. And for the shadow pass, I'm going to reduce the opacity and change the color. And we are doing this manually, eyeballing it, because this is a big disadvantage of Blender. It doesn't have a proper linear workflow, because you are now dealing with gamma issues, color grading, the colors of the photo doesn't really match the colors of the render, so you have to just go with it. With linear workflow, everything is more scientific. Everything is with numbers. And if you have every setting correct, you can know that the colors of your render are the ones that need to be outputted to make a VFX composition. So you may have to adjust the contrast in certain areas. Maybe you want to activate Filmic for your renders. Maybe you don't. Maybe you want to work with RGV. It's up to you. I continue the editing of my, of my renders as I would any other photo. I use Dutch and Burn. I use Curves. I use LUTs. Whatever I need so that the image has the potential that I see in my head that the render doesn't give me out straight out. And that's it, just adjust the image to your artistic style and that will be it. Thanks for watching.